Joining us right now to talk about corporate leaders facing big challenges, and of course the markets as well, is Joe Moglia. He is former chairman and CEO of TD Ameritrade and executive advisor to the president at Coastal Carolina University. Joe, leadership has been something you have focused on not only in your career on Wall Street, um, but also in what you've done with your football program too, yes, um, yes. teaching leadership. We do see a number of these crises that are taking place um, around the business world yep, today. Yep. Got any thoughts on any of these situations, how you step up to these challenges? Yeah, I think while each of those companies that you mentioned, Becky, have a little bit of a, a, little bit of a separate issue and problem, mm -hmm. uh, there are three priorities every CEO's got to have, every firm's got to have. It's all about your clients, your shareholders, and your employees. If you don't do a great job with your clients, you're not going to be in business. If you can't, if you don't have a reasonable profit, you're not going to be in business. And you deliver value to each of those constituents through your employees. So you've got to get that right. The other piece of it is just real leadership. It's about standing up, uh, being standing on your own two feet, taking responsibility for yourself. You always treat others with dignity and respect and live with the consequences of your actions. That's it. Now, what happens, I think, sometimes CEOs become enamored in terms of the way they uh, present themselves in front of the board because the board's going to pay them the way they handle themselves on television, the way they handle themselves uh, in public. But you can have a sophisticated strategy that handles a lot of contingencies, but if it's not simple enough to execute, you're not going to get the job done. And what happens, they get away from those three priorities, and they forget about the leadership principle where you, uh, you are the one responsible. You're the one that takes care of your people, your clients, your shareholders, and you're the one that's got to uh, live with the consequences of those actions. We get away from those principles sometimes, and when we do, we get in trouble. Yeah, I, I'm thinking through some of those individual instances. Gary Kelly, for instance, um, maybe ran into problems because they weren't reinvesting enough in the company, um, updating things and modernizing things. Uh, you look at Boeing, you know, some situations there where it was not enough attention paid to detail on the floor with making sure some of those come through. It's a lot easier to say it, though, than to actually do it. Well, that's the reason why I said you can have a very well thought out, sophisticated strategy. And that sounds good in front of the rest of the world. But if that strategy is not simplified in a way where your people, whether it's 100 people or 25,000 people can execute, you're not going to get the job done. Frankly, it's the same thing in football. You can have a sophisticated playbook, but if you don't have a simple enough game plan where 11 guys can function, function at once, immediately, in concert, without hesitation, you're not going to be effective. What's easier to deal with on the football field or in the world of business? Both of them are tough. You got uh, every job I coached for 25 years. Every job I got, the guy before me got fired. So you know you, you got to get the job done in both worlds. Yeah. Let, let's talk a little bit about markets right now and what we might expect to hear from the Federal Reserve. Uh, markets have been near highs. This month's been a little bit rougher. Yep. Yesterday was pretty good yep. though. Yep. Um, and we are expecting that the Fed is going to cut rates next week. 25 basis points or 50 basis points. Yeah, I think if I were the Fed. I'm not the Fed, but if I were the Fed, I would go with 50 basis points. I think, you know, the, you're, we're five and a quarter, five and a half percent right now as far as the, the rates go. To go to five, five to five and a quarter, I don't even think that makes a difference. It's too small, it's too minute. To go to four and three quarters of five percent might make a difference. So why not be a little bit more aggressive now in the beginning? They get going to take October off. Then they've got two solid months to get more data to, to, to see what the reaction is with regard to the market, the economy, inflation, labor. Uh, they have another month after that. So you've got two solid months to be able to look at what they're doing. I would go with 50 basis points. I wouldn't even hesitate as far as that goes. The only, where, only time I might pause for a second on that would be, is 50 basis points too much right in front of an election? That, that was what Richard Fisher, the former Dallas Fed president, said when he was here earlier this morning. Um, you don't want to look political by doing it. And the other issue people have brought up is you don't want to panic folks. If you're cutting 50 basis points, does that signal that things are worse than maybe others on the street are thinking? If you have a negative attitude, it will. But if you don't have a negative attitude, it won't. And I think Powell can explain that. Hmm. The, again, the bottom line is when we waited too long initially to hike, and then we did, we became very, very aggressive. And all that looked like it started to pay off. Everybody thought the market said, oh, we're going to we're going to automatically start to ease in the first quarter. Well, that didn't happen. But Powell didn't say it was going to happen. Powell pretty much tells us what he's really thinking. So we've gone several, almost a year now from the time that he said, all right, we're done hiking. We're done with that. And I think now it's time for them to ease. They know that. They're going to do that. So why not take a little bit of a bigger step rather than a baby step? And then just explain why you did that. And you got two months to evaluate the data. It, it, we don't have to panic and think we're going to go into a recession.